G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Flashlight Crazy. Today I am reviewing the Mataminko FW3 LED and LEP. Let's check it out. All right, in the box you will get your Mataminko FW3 user manual. You will get your Mataminko lanyard and it is a nice lanyard. Very simple, but very effective. You will get two spare O-rings and you will get a 21700 unprotected cell. Now, just before I install the battery, let's have a look at the contact areas. So we've got a spring at the tail and a spring at the head there. Not that you would weapon mount this light, but it's just good to know that you've got uh, springs at both ends for good contact. And it's got a very long thread, actually, by the way. So uh, it screws for quite a while. It's got two O-rings at the tail, which means that water resistance will be really good in this light. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, well, obviously, it's OD green. It's very nice OD green. It's really gorgeous color. Really bounces off the light well. Uh, now, before I go over the externals, I just want to show you. I'm going to turn the light off. Now see that, so the battery is included, uh, is installed, sorry, and you can see that the tail cap glows, and then you can see those glowing areas on each side of the tail cap there. So that's a, uh, it's pretty cool, but it will drain the battery slowly, so uh, it's not recommended to leave the battery installed in this light um, without using it. Now, if I turn the tail cap, it turns off, so that locks it out. Turn it back on, but also, when the light is in use, you will see these little bits here. Uh, where are they? There. So on the side, you will see light coming out of them as well, which is really cool. So if I get it to the LEP, and then you will see that at nighttime, those little bits there. So that's really cool as well. Nice little uh, unique characteristic. All right, so starting off at the head, we've got nine Cree XBD LEDs that are surrounding the outside of the, uh, of the face, and they are going to control your flood. So they're your LEDs which control your flood. So all that, right? In the middle there, you've got your white laser lens, and down the bottom is where the white laser is going to come out of. Now, this is an LED slash LEP light. It's a very clever light, uh, and that's why you've got that system right there. Now, moving on to the neck, as I said, you've got these uh, these open areas here where you'll see the light come out when it's in use. You've got these uh, nice little slits here that are great patterns. They look like little arrows or darts or something. And then you've got this really smooth pattern here, which if you notice is the same on the tail cap as well. So smooth pattern on the neck, smooth on the tail cap. Really well designed light, I think. It looks good. It just looks good. Uh, now, on the neck, you've got a very subtle uh, grip area. So it's very subtle. It's not too rough at all. Really smooth. This whole light is really smooth. And it's very comfortable. Very comfortable to hold. Uh, you do have a stainless steel pocket clip. Uh, if, I could, if, I, if I could choose, I would probably ask for it to be a little bit more tense. But it's not a deal breaker. I'm just a bit of a pocket clip snob. And um, that's just not as tense as I would like it but it's not a deal breaker, as I said, because I'd still use it, and I have used it. And then the tail cap is probably my favorite part of this light. It's just so nice. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know what it is about it. Uh, it's just so nice. And the, the smooth areas here, complemented by the open areas with the blue, gorgeous tail clicky, uh, tail guards as well, tail standing, which is awesome for when you've got this on... Uh, on, on flood, for example, it's just awesome to be able to tail stay out a floody light. Uh, yeah, I just, I really love the tail cap on this. It's awesome. And because it kicks out a bit, I know I say this a lot, but when you've got a light that is thin or thinner in the body and thicker in the tail cap, it just makes for very comfortable holding and your thumb just falls ever so naturally on that bloody tail switch and you're just good to go. All right, so the Mataminko FW3 from head to end of tail guard it comes in at 14.6 centimeters. And the width of the face from either end of the, of the outside of the light comes in at four centimeters. Width of the body comes in at two and a half centimeters. 
And width of the tail cap comes in at three centimeters. A nice uh, half a centimeter kick out. Okay, the weight of the Mataminko FW3 with the pocket clip and the 21700 included is 203.91 grams. Wow, I didn't expect it to be that heavy. This light does not feel like it weighs 200 grams. It just doesn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't feel that heavy. It feels very light. Uh, so I'm not sure how they've done that. Probably the material of the of the outside of the, the light, aluminium alloy. Uh, I, you know, your guess is as good as mine, but this is such a nice light and it's not very heavy despite being 200 grams. All right, so going over the UI of the Mataminko FW3. Now, it, it's a really awesome UI. Uh, first things first, it will always start off in low. So low is your five lumens. And it will always, always start off in this, despite leaving it in strobe, for example, or leaving it in LEP. It will always come back on in low if you leave it for a few seconds. So I like that because there is no guesswork about what it's going to come on in. But I also like it because you've got instant to LEP if you just double click. So if you give it a quick half press and then a full press after that, that's LEP straight away. So that's nice. And then if you do two half presses and then a full press, one, two, full, you've got strobe, including the LEP. So it's got some instant accesses to things, uh, which is good, but it will always start off in low, which I really like. So the outputs are low at five lumens, which you'll get for 100 hours. Then off and on really quick, you've got medium, which is 75 lumens, you'll get for 50 hours. Off and on quick again, you've got 620 lumens, which you'll get for 250 minutes. Off and on again, you've got high, sorry, you've got turbo, which is uh, 1300 lumens, and you'll get that for 210 minutes. Now, off and on again, you've got low LEP, and that is 180 lumens, which you'll get for 150 minutes. And then off and on again, you've got high LEP. That's 255 lumens, which you'll get for 180 minutes. Now, the max range of this is 1,356 meters, uh, and that is because it is pushed out by 46, sorry, it is pushed out by 460,000 candela. Now, off and on again, that's turbo LED and turbo LEP. You will get that for 90 minutes, and the total lumen output is 1,550. So that is uh, pretty impressive to be able to have flood plus spot, you will see in the night shots that it is actually very useful to be able to have all that flood right in front of you, but still be able to find something in the distance with the LEP spot. So really, really cool. Uh, another cool thing that I really like about this is because it is a forward clicky, you can half press until you find the mode you want and then fully click in. And that tail click cap is such a pleasure to push. It really is a pleasure to push. So uh, this is a very, very nice light to use. Very, very nice. Now, if you do want to lock this light out, you just give the tail half a turn, that's it, and then turn it back, it will engage again. All right, so let's get a beam shot on... Okay, so that's the flood on turbo. And it is very floody, very, very floody. As you'll see in the night shot, it's just pure flood. But it's nice, it's, per it's great for a floodlight, it's friggin' awesome. For a you know, 21700 handheld floodlight, this does very, very well. And it's not getting too hot either. I mean, it's getting warm, but it's not getting too hot. All right, let's head out to the park, check out what this thing can do at night, and then we will be back for some final thoughts on the Mataminko FW3. See you in a sec. All right, the Mataminko FW3. Now that's on the lowest output. Not very useful like this, only, you know, a step or two away. But one step up and it becomes extremely useful. Still only, you know, a few meters away, but still very useful because the flood on this is very impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the flood on uh, this Metaminko. All right, now, bang, bang. Now that's gone berserk. And that's not even turbo, but that's very nice flood. 
very nice flood indeed. And now let's go turbo. Let's go turbo here. Okay, so it didn't look like too much of a step up, but it's really nice. That's, that's it right there, directly in front of the camera, putting out a whole lot of light, giving me basically a 180 degree uh, light wall right in front of my feet, which is really, really cool. If I can just show you that there. See that? So that's from the top there. Look how much light that's given me. Awesome. Now, if I go like that, we get the low on the LEP. And now that's what we're talking about. This is such a sick light, man. Honestly, sick little light. And now let's step up. There's high on the LEP. Really cool. And now if you want the LEP, but you also want to see your surroundings, there you have it. So you've got spot and flood. Oh yeah. I can see what's in that tree and I can see everything in front of me. Check that out. Awesome. See the sign over there? Very easily lit up with this LEP. Cool, man. Happy with that. I'm out of here. See ya. All right, so what did we think? Well, performance-wise, it does brilliantly. Uh, the flood I'm super impressed with, but also to be able to uh, double tap into a spotlight is awesome. And then to be able to triple into a strobe is awesome as well. To be able to access your uh, flood and spot in the, in the same single celled uh, 21700 light is friggin' brilliant. So very, very nice design, very nice UI in my opinion, simple yet effective. Now this light comes in at about 250 Australian dollars. Uh, you can get it less from AliExpress, and but if you want to go through an authorized dealer, then it's going to cost you about 240, 250. Uh, I always suggest authorized dealers, but the decision's yours. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching another review on Flashlight Crazy. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, stay cool and stay safe. See ya.